Then about a week later, I got a response from a beautiful 25-year-old Russian woman. Uh. <laughs> I was in my, I was in heaven. <laughs> to think a 25-year-old beautiful woman would pay attention to me just blew me away. Until she wanted to ask me for money to send her to Canada. <laughs> While I dropped her, just kept her in my fantasies. <laughs> A couple of weeks later, I got a response from a 41-year-old single lady in Walkerton, Ontario. <laughs> she seemed like a nice lady and had three grown boys and three grandchildren. She was originally from a small town in Newfoundland and, in Mo and lived in Moosonee, Ontario for eight years. We started emailing back and forth. And it turned out we had a lot in common. But she always lived in small towns, and I was always from big cities. So while chatting online, I turned to her about, and asked her if she had ever been to Canada's Wonderland. She replied, no. So I asked her, I says, have you ever been on a Ferris wheel or on a roller coaster? Her response was no. So I asked her, I said, well, have you ever been on a Ferris wheel? Her response again was no. So I wrote back, wow, you've never lived. <laughs> well, she wrote back to me and she said, well, have you ever watched whales swim in the ocean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I replied, no. <laughs> have you ever swam anywhere near an iceberg? I replied, no. And she snapped back and she said, well, you never lived. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> that was just her wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> After a few weeks of emailing each other, we finally made arrangements on the drive to Walkerton to meet her. I knew that when I got there, I knew then that I had met the love of my life. We spent the whole summer together driving. I would drive to Walkerton every weekend, and she would cook me delicious home-cooked meals. In the fall, we decided we would, that she would move to Brampton and we would live together. Well, while we were moving all her stuff in, I kept noticing all these spices she had. She had tons and tons of spices. So I said to her, I said, do we really need all these spices? And she responded, do you like my cooking? <laughs> and I said, yes. Then shut <laughs> Needless to say, I never said a word about that again. <laughs> well, after about, a living, after about a year living together, it was time to fly to Newfoundland to meet her mom. When we got there, we were driving along the highway to her mom's house, and I happened to notice as we were driving, there was no roadkill on the road. I said, that kind of thought that was kind of odd. So I mentioned that to her and she smiled and said, our animals are smarter, they know how to stay off the roads. <laughs> well, a few, mile, a few miles down the road, I saw one. And she turned around to me and she said, oh, he must have came from the mainland, he, do, mainland. he doesn't know any better. <laughs> and then she turned around to me and she said, you know there's no skunks in the flat? And I said, no, nah, you got to be pulling my leg. Well, a little while later, I Googled it. Sure enough, there is no skunks in Newfoundland. She just told me, she said, well, because we told them smelly little things that we didn't want them in our backyard. <laughs> <laughs> well, while we were in Newfoundland, I had a great time there, and I told her I, it would be a great place to retire. So for the next eight years, we shared a wonderful life together, lots of family times, and four more grandchildren. Well, in September 2011, she found a lump on her breast. She went for a mammogram, and sure enough, it was breast cancer. Well, she had the surgery, then the chemo and radiation. That's when I learned how strong she really was. She did that like a trooper, kept her sense of humor intact. 
About 10 months later, after all that was done, she was able to return back to work. But soon after, she started having pains in her lower back. At first, they told us that it was arthritis in her back, but it kept getting worse. So after a bone scan, it, she was advised that cancer had came back into her bones. Back to chemo and radiation. And after a few months, the pain was, had been getting too great for her to be able to handle the stairs. So we had to move. So I went around and found an apartment that had a walkout apartment so she wouldn't have to use the stairs. But unfortunately, it was too late. On August the 6th, 2013, two days after we moved into that apartment, I woke up to see that she had passed away in her sleep. I had the most grateful time to have her in my life. And she has given me a second family, which I hold dear to. In fact, just this past weekend, I got to have, I got to have a wonderful weekend with her oldest son and his children from Usini. I miss you terribly, hon, but I'm doing okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>